conference. This is important, boss. How's my pay? Judge Gray demands gambling ban. Hmm? Let me see that. Jurist brands Bell Bonner's resort minister community. I can't be seen right. Judge John Gray, who operates his J Bar Ranch for the rehabilitation of underprivileged boys. Professional jealousy. The big boys who come in here don't get any privileges either. That's why they come in. Judge Gray urges the county supervisors to close Bell Bonner's gambling resort. The Bonner woman declares Judge Gray not only preys upon the highly paid workers of the tungsten mine, but upon the youth of the valley. Miss Gray packs a lot of weight. I'll spot him, Matt. Now, these long-haired reformers are murder. What happens if he does close us up? You three lugs will have to go to work. Oh, oh you got to take care of this old psalm singer. Oh. How can I go to work? I ain't got time. Now, don't cry, kiddies. Mom will see that you keep on riding the gravy train. What a dish. What is this, a beauty parlor or a modiste saloon? The word salon. Quit clowning, Belle. This is business. Yeah, my business. I built it up from a dive to a high-class joint. No psalm-singing blue nose is going to... Hey, Pete, get my car. Okay. You fellas, get back to your job. Where are you going? To the J-Bar Ranch. You can't take on the judge. He's tough. The right amount of dough might soften him up a bit. Belle, don't try a bribe. I've nothing to lose. No? How are you fixed for teeth? Sun, as it smiles above the trees in Idaho, to say another night is done. Warm summer winds toss the wave and rain, calling me back to my home again to dream. Sweet memories of long ago, beyond the hills in Idaho. When I am lonely, my dreams picture to me my home and all I've left behind. Someday I'll go back to live happy and free. No worry on my mind. It's peace that I'll find away beyond the hills and night of home. Canyon greet the sun as it smiles above the trees in Idaho to say another night is done. Warm summer winds toss the wave and grain, calling me back to my home again to dream. Sweet memories of long ago, beyond. The hills in Idaho. Bob, you propose better each time. Now, don't laugh, Terry. I'm serious. You know, I'm going to keep right on asking you. Maybe someday you'll change your mind. Oh, I'm awfully fond of you, Bob. I wish I could say yes, but I've got to say no. You heard that, didn't you, Robin? Oh, how did you know we were here? Simple matter of deduction. Moonlight, salt music. Besides, this is the place where we usually come to propose, isn't it? Now, listen, Terry. What's the score now? 16 to 14. You're two up on me, Bobby. Well, go on and try a couple. <laughs> oh, Terry, why don't you haul off and say yes? No. 15. Ouch! A note. I suppose this is somebody proposing by carrier pigeon. Mm-hmm. What's his score? Pretty high. Dad's always leaving notes around. Darling, I just happen to think you'd like a birthday party. J.G. It's quite a party. My dad's quite a fellow. He shouldn't be spending money on me. The ranch is in debt. Giving his boys a chance in life is all he lives for. That's why he's so determined to make this town a good place for them to live in. Tangling with Bell Bonner isn't going to be easy. Don't There's a feller down in Mexico that the senior reaches dream. 
He can throw a noose on the wild coyotes and as a lumber, he's supreme. He's a pump and pride in the countryside where the Rio rolls along. He can rope and ride when he hits the stride when he sings the cowboy song. Dumb bum, he's a gentleman from Mexico. Dumb bum, that's the mood you wear, Romeo. He says things are real hard to blame across the Rio Grande. He has a manner that's a pretty dark, I doubt to understand. I can sing and dance, I can shoot and fence like a champion matador. And I'm telling you, pals, I can woo them gals like they've never been wooed before. But the clumsy way you court today just fills me with disgust. I can wink one eye and them gals pass by, a maiden bites the dust. Don Juan, he's a gentleman from Mexico. Don Juan, that's the mood you made of Romeo. He says, did you read his heart to flame across the Rio Grande? He has a manner that's pretty dark, I gals can understand. Well, good night, fellas. I'll be seeing you. I'm sorry. Mind if we sit this one out, Judge? I feel a little chat coming on. We can talk in my study. I'm... Quite a brawl. I wondered that you can afford it. Well, the fruit punch alone must have run you into heavy dough. It can't be my financial standing that disturbs you, Miss Bonner. What makes you think I'm disturbed? You read the papers, don't you? Only the funnies. That's how I happen to catch your article. Miss Bonner, I seriously intend to try to put you out of business. You pack enough weight in this to do it. Well, that's quite an admission, Miss Bonner. Now comes the proposition. You lay off my racket and I'll help you stay in yours, which I hear has you winging for money. You see, I've got a charitable nature, too. Just how much money would it take to get this boy's camp of yours out of the red? A considerable amount. Whereas I think I can get you out of the town with no cost whatever. That's all, Miss Bonner. Give me that judicial brush off. Thirty dollars or thirty days. It won't be all. Would you mind leaving by this door, please? That's him in the door. Come on. I hope you're a couple of process servers. We're a couple of old friends. Hey, good looking. Take it from me. This party's a dud. You'll be up to your ears in potato salad and local Maud Muller's. If it gets you, drop in on me. I'm Del Bonner, owner of the town's smartest bistro. That's elegant for saloon. Hello, Tom. Still writing notes? Spike Madigan. This is Duke Springer, old Mike's son. Shake hands with Tom Allison. He's robbed more banks than you've got teeth. And you end up being a judge. That's better percentage than my old man got. You must be plenty smooth. And it seems you've inherited your father's heavy-handed technique. What do you mean? That upstate bank robbery was a clumsy attempt. What are you talking about? The kid and I are just passing through. I thought for old times' sake you might hide you out. We'll catch on quick. We're plenty warm. Well, you won't cool off here. I don't hide murders. Oh, you listen to the radio, huh? There are a couple of state rangers among my guests who would be pleased to meet you two. Uh, wouldn't they be happy to know that the Honorable Judge Gray is the notorious Tom Allison? That's all too long ago to even interest them. How would your daughter feel about having an ex-convict for a father? That ex is the receipt for my debt to society paid in full. Come on, let's get out. Catch him 
by going that way. shoot again. I guess you're right. Hey, wait a minute. Gasoline. Oh, it's probably the radiator. We'll find out. We're fresh out of gas. right in the tank. Here's that Ford. You think he'll stop? He better stop. What's the matter? We're out of gas. <laughs> and where was you going in such a hurry? Canyon City to Bell Bonnet. Bell Bonnet? Hmm, I don't blame you. She's about the prettiest view around here. Get in. You're lucky for you fellas, it was me that picked you up. Is it? Yeah, lots of folks wouldn't pick up strangers at night, in case they might be bandits. But not me. No, sir. I ain't a fear to nobody. It was gasoline. Well, it didn't seem to help much. They got away. Must have caught a ride. Well, didn't you see the judge? No. As I told you, I was about to return to the party when the two of them sneaked in and... Well, how did you know there were two of them? Well, one man couldn't hit that hard. Must have been Madigan and Springer. Roy, if a couple of fugitives were going to commit further robbery, wouldn't they steer clear of a judge? What makes you think they knew you were a judge? Or that they were trying to commit robbery? You don't keep any money around here, and what you had on you was still in your pockets. I'm afraid we'll have to call it one of those unexplainable happenings. Well, from the answers you're giving me, I might as well call it quits. Daddy, you sure you all enough to drive into town? Why, darling, that tap on the head merely knocked the cobwebs out. Seem at all worried about it. Oh, I don't think any more will come of it. Just a couple of gentlemen passing through with a blackjack in their hand. Well, I can see you're not going to be much help. I'll have to figure this out myself. So you rode up with Terry, huh? Yeah, how'd you know? Sorry through the window. Oh, spying on me, huh? Well, I gotta protect my interests. How's the score now? We're even up. 16 all. Well, that's something. Says she's got too much else on her mind. You see the judge? Yeah, I talked to him. What'd you find out? He doesn't seem to know anything. I wonder. How's the law doing this morning? Well, don't tell us you care. No, I want to see the judge. Well, he's not in here. He's about to open a meeting of the Board of Supervisors. That's why I'm here, in the interest of Canyon City. Well, that's right, civic-minded of you, Mr. Bonner. I'll take you into him. Come in. A lady to see you, Judge. Shh. Don't confuse the judge, Ranger. In your book, I don't measure up to the lady standard, do I, Judge? I'd rather not go into personalities. They're interesting to me. Especially dual personalities. 
Like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, or Judge Gray and Tom Allison. I like you two better than Jekyll and Hyde. From what I read about your exploits, you had manners. Like that charming little habit of leaving notes of apology every time you pulled a job. That showed imagination. You didn't come here to reminisce about my past, Miss Bonner. No, but it'll help, Mr. Allison. I can guess where you learned my identity. Really? From a pair of murderers named Duke Springer and Spike Madigan. Now, take it easy. I don't mess around with the underworld. In fact, you're the only criminal I've ever met. I've got to hand it to you. Judge Gray, mentor of youth, leader of the community. One of the toughest bad men the West has ever known. I'd like to get a load of the Board of Supervisors when they find that out. Would you care to address them this morning? I'm not the telling kind. I believe in live and let live, if you know what I mean. You'd like to have me back down on my anti-gambling campaign. You catch on quick. It'd be pretty stupid, wouldn't it, to brand Terry as a criminal's daughter? I suppose it would at that. I knew we could make a deal. Now go on in and speak your little piece. Tell them Bell Bonner's a good egg after all. I'll try to make it very convincing. Leave the door open, Tom. I'd like to hear you throw your pitch. The idea is to sell them. I'll do my best. Good morning. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Judge. Hello, Hello Judge. Sam. How are you, boy? All right, Joe. Gentlemen, I've called this meeting to discuss what action the board ought to take against the gambling at Bell Barner's place on the county line. Well, I'd like to close it up. What's the matter, Ed? Still sore because you lost your hog money there Saturday night? <laughs> <laughs> Canyon City is something more than a boom town. It's a community of homes, of women and children and young people. They're the ones I'm thinking about. And I don't think we should let a handful of racketeers prey on them. The judge is right. Yes, we've got to think of our kids. What do you propose to do, Judge? I propose we petition the city council to draft a law with teeth in it. A law that will put Bell Barner out of business. That's the best way to stop it. Let's drive him out of town. I agree with you, Judge. Will you come in now, Miss Barner? Keep out of sight. What's the difference? None of these scissor bills know me anyway. Judge Gray does. What's the matter, baby? You don't look very happy. Did the old man call you a bluff? Yeah. Next time you two can deal a hand. You want Spike and me to go ahead? Right. Suits me fine. I can use some more folded money. After you get it, you'll spend the next few days or it won't do you any good. What do you mean? I've got a little hideout up in the hills waiting for you and Spike. You can just relax up there and play gin rummy until things cool off. Play gin rummy with Spike. I don't trust him. The guy's a crook. Hello. This is Judge Gray speaking. The chickies he fork. To identify them. Why, I've already told Rogers I didn't see the two men. All right. I'll be there. certainly took your time. I've been waiting here over an hour. Waiting for who? What are you talking about? Well, didn't you and Roy send word you wanted me to meet you here? I certainly didn't. Did you, Roy? Well, no. The man on the phone said that you wanted me to identify those two hold-up men. On the phone? What man? Looks like somebody pulled a fast one on you, Judge. Yeah. But why? 
I don't know, but... Well, then what are you fellas doing here? We're looking for a couple of men who held up the bank a while ago. Held up the bank? Yes, and killed Clem Pyle. Clem? What? Did you see him, Bob? No, they got away before I got there. Well, did, did anybody see him? No, they wore masks. And here's a hot one. They left this note. T.A. Signing off on the job. How do you like that? As Bob says, it, it is rather a hot one. Yeah. How does a firecracker, Judge? Well, uh, we better be riding along. Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, good luck. I came as soon as I could after I got your message. It sounded urgent. Read that. I need help. I lied to you about those two men. They were Springer and Madigan, all right. I should have told you the truth, but they had something on me. You see, I'm Allison. You? Yeah. But I had nothing to do with the bank holdup or Clem's death. Belle Bonner found out about me from them. She offered her silence if I'd stop my campaign against her. When I refused, they held up the bank, killed Clem, left the note signed T.A., and then sent the old-timer letter to the newspaper. Now, if she talks, or if Bob gets suspicious and starts digging into the records. Yeah, and I haven't an alibi. The phone call fixed that. And everyone knows I need money. We've got to put the blame where it belongs. Then you do believe me. Don't worry, Judge. I'll let you know the minute anything breaks. Tell me what everybody's reading. Ten thousand dollars reward for the capture of Tom Allison. Tom Allison wanted in bank holdup. Thanks to a mysterious letter sent to this newspaper signed Old Timer, the authorities are the belief that the one-time notorious bandit has struck again. Yes, sir. He sure has. I wonder what the letter says. Old Timer recalls similar notes to the one found in the Canyon City Bank as a trademark of Allison. This idiosyncrasy... Idiot. Of what, Chrissy? <laughs> A peculiarity, a habit like Dad's. He's always leaving notes around. Well, he don't initial him Tom Allison, does he? <laughs> I should hope not. <laughs> I'd hate to throw the judge in the quake. That'd be embarrassing. I'm depending on him passing sentence on Alice after I catch him. Go around him up, Frog. Can you catch him, Frog? How are you going to do that, Frog? Oh, I'm going to comb the territory. <laughs> <laughs> 
What did he look like? Well, how do I know? I've got to catch him first. <laughs> <laughs> you think you should find out first and then catch him? I never thought of that. <laughs> Why, that makes it simple. Boys, let's get up a posse. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I could find out what he looks like. Oh, would you? If you could do that, I'd settle for a hundred bucks and you could have all the rest of it. Well, we could pay off on the ranch. With that money, we could pull a judge out. Let's try it, Miss Terry. Let's go to work. Boys, it's an idea. A splendid idea. In a couple of days, we may have something to go on. anything funny the other night? After the robbery, I mean. That phone call to Judge Gray? I don't think there was any phone call. Then what was he doing out there that time of night? Could be Tom Allison. Oh, you're crazy. I'm not crazy, and you know it. Oh, we're just passing around looking for Allison. You and the boys are taking unfair advantage, aren't you? How's a bandit going to keep on running when a pretty girl's leading the posse? Speaking of pretty girls, 17 ought to be lucky. How about it, Terry? Why, of course not. How perfectly ridiculous to be asking silly questions at a time like this. I'm serious. So am I. Well, you're one up on me. Hey, listen, Terry, you and these kids crazy? Is it crazy to try to save Dad's ranch? That's what that reward money would do, and I'm going to try to get it. Look, Allison is dangerous. I want you to keep off these roads. Now take these kids and go on home. Is that an official order? That's right. He's the head ranger. Oh, shucks. The posse's papa's sending them home. All right. After the afternoon stage arrives, I may have a laugh on you. Who is she expecting on the stage? Tom Allison. Allison? Or a reasonable likeness of him. What? A picture. Miss Terry's gone all out on this manhunt. Nobody knows what Allison looks like, so she ups and writes her girlfriend on the Boise Daily News. So her girlfriend ups and has Allison photographed? No, she dug one out of the morgue. Then she telephones Miss Terry that it's on the stage. Well, Roy, I've got to get back. You mosey along, keep your eyes peeled. Say, Frog, how about you riding along with me? No, I better not. i got to meet the stage. I don't want that picture kicking around. Well, neither do I. But I've got a hunch Bob will be there to get that picture. Why, he can't do that. He can't double-cross me. He can unless you cross him. Well, doggone. Well, I'll hamstring him. I'll hog time off. That's an idea. I'll tell you how to go about it. Hi, Andy. Hi, Roy. Say, have you got a special envelope? Yeah. Right pretty girl asked me to drop it off to Jay Barr. Well, a right pretty girl asked me to get it for her. Terry Gray. They must have the picture some feller. Ain't who's not, are you? Well, your guess is as good as mine, Andy. Are you expecting someone? Mm-hmm. A stout man with a package. Would you settle for a rangy guy with an envelope? Especially if it's got a picture of Tom Allison in it. Where did you get that? I stopped the stage out of town and told Andy you were in a hurry for it. Well, I might have known Frog couldn't keep a secret. Well, now that you've outsmarted me, do you mind if I have a look at the picture? I think your dad better decide that. Why? It's my letter, isn't it? You see, Dad, I had Mabel Smith take that picture of Allison out of the files. The boys and I had a wild idea of trying to save the ranch by getting the reward. Well, <clears throat> Don't laugh at me. It's not a joke. In a way, it is, Terry. You see, this is a picture of me. You? Yes. Tom Allison? 
Terry, I think your dad stopped being Paul Mallison a long time ago. Long before he became your dad. But then, by trying to play detective, I've... It's all right, Terry. You didn't know. I guess nobody's interested in this picture of Tom Allison. That's where you're wrong, Rogers. Made a special trip out here to get there. Well, you haven't changed much. A little older, perhaps, but still a smooth customer. Bring him along, Roy. I'm sorry, Terry. You're barking up the wrong tree, Bob. Now, listen. I'm still head man in this outfit, and I'm giving you orders. Well, I'm not taking it. Roy! Hey, Roy! <laughs> I done it! I done it! I tried a square knot on a granny knot and a slip knot! Is this your rope? Yeah! Oh, no! Come along, Allison. trying to tell decent people how to live. And him, Tom Allison. Once a crook, always a crook, I say. You say too much. Tom Allison, standing on his record of honesty since his release from prison 22 years ago, and his subsequent appointment to the bench as judge, states confidentially that he will beat this rap. He might do it, too. What about me and the boys, seeing that he don't? It's my guess that Bill Bonner will try to do something to keep the judge from coming to trial. That doesn't look good. No, he's taking the judge over to the county scene. Just in time, I say. We've got to catch Bob before they do. There's the gang of Bell Bonner's men, and they're looking for trouble. Well, I can handle them. All right, you go ahead and handle them. But let me take the judge out of this. No, I'm not giving up my prisoner. But I tell you, they're looking for trouble. So are you. Now, you go on your way before I... place, but looks like it's going to be home for a while. Looks mighty good to me. Yeah, let's just hold up here for a few months. By that time, Madigan the Spring will be a thousand miles away. Are we going to hunt them upstate bandits while we're resting? Yes, but we've got to work fast. 
Bob will have a price on my head in no time. What a mess I've let you in for, son. Well, that's all right, Judge. You know, now that their scheme has worked, I've got a hunt Springer and Madigan will show up at Bell's again any time now. Well, what are we waiting for? Not so fast, Frog. Roy and I can't show our faces at Bonner's. Well, I can. I'll go and get them fellas. There's a slight difficulty, Frog, that you don't even know them. Yeah. I never thought of that. I know. What we need is a clue. Yeah. Hey, what about that abandoned car you found, Roy? Phony plates and registration, of course. Car? Where'd you find it? At the crossroads. Jumping Haddock, when? The same night they slugged the judge. Well, finally for a frog, I had him right out of my thumb and let him get away. You what? I picked them fellas up at the sawmill crossing and gave them a ride. Well, would you know them if you saw them again? Would I know them? I went into Bell Bonner's with them. I'm going to go get them. Wait a minute, frog. How about you coming over here and listening for a change? I thought I told you to stay in the office. I got lost for you. That ranger was in here pining for the sight of you. I know, but I saw him first. Relax, relax. There's nothing to worry about. Howdy, Miss Bonner. Hello, Frog. Three sarsaparillas. Glad to see you again. I'm glad to see you. Say, wasn't that Stevens that just left here? <laughs> he couldn't catch a cold. Now, you take Tom Allison. Them rangers will never capture him. Never. Mm, that's a good sarsaparilla. Where was I? You were talking about Tom Allison. A real old-time bad man. You know, them rangers don't understand the psychology of a man like that. Are you an authority on criminology? Well, I don't know nothing about that, but I know all about crooks. If they deputized me, I'd have him back in the clink in no time. How would you go about it? Well, I figure Allison was smart. I'd ask myself, now, if I was him, what would I do? What would you do? I'd hold up the payroll truck to the tungsten mine. Sounds pretty risky. She goes loaded, boy. 80,000 bucks every trip. With that kind of money for a stake, a guy could really make a getaway. How could he? I figure Allison would be there to hijack that truck, and I'd be there to get him. You're terrific. Have another sarsaparilla. I don't think I better. Something I have disagreed with me. Excuse me, will you, please? You'd better go back to the hideout and stay there until they grab Allison. I'm getting tired of that joint. All we do is play gin and I lose. I must be lucky in luck. Please, Duke, as a favor to me. Okay, babe, if you put it that way. Where's Strike? Outside, I guess. Take it easy, big boy, until I get in touch with you. I must, I must. Be seeing you. Well, oh, what's the matter? I got an idea from that big fat head about that payroll truck. When is payday at that tungsten outfit? Tomorrow. But count me out, mister. I gave you a break by framing the judge. The least you can do is help me get a stake. Just what do you expect me to do? You get Bud and the boys. Have them meet Spike and me at the hideout tomorrow. When that payroll truck comes along, we'll knock it off. Kill the guard and your pals, Allison and Rogers, will be blamed for it. I'll take that part of it. And that's the deal? Yes. Take care of my boys. And then keep right on going. I thought you were beginning to care for me. I'm looking after Bill Bonner. Well, you're pretty smart at that. So long, Bill. Good luck. What's the matter? That blowhard they call Frog was listening to every word you said to Bell. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I just saw him duck in the shadows over there beyond that car. Oh. Well, let's see if he'll follow us.
take right along. So that's where they've been keeping themselves. If you'll stay here, Judge, I'll take a look around. Okay. All right, Snoopy, spill it. Huh? You were listening to what I told Bell Bonner. Why, no. Yes, I was. Why? Well, I figured you fellas was them fugitives. Yeah? Me knowing so much about crooks, I was going to catch you. Go on. I guess I kind of overreached myself. But this is going to alarm me not to be playing detective by myself. By yourself, huh? Yeah. There's no fool like a fool. That's right. You should have warned the ranger you suspected us. And let him glom on that reward? I ain't that foolish. You could have split it with him. I ain't splitting with nobody. I'm a lone wolf. So you figured you'd capture the whole lot of us single-handed, huh? And I'd have done it if I hadn't got careless. Okay, park him in the back room. Come on, kill it, killer. Move. All right. But let's play some more gin rummy. We've got something more important on our minds than cards. Kim? <laughs> He's goofy. Yeah? I hope that thought will comfort you when they put a rope around your neck. Huh? If he ever talks with dead pigeons. Go ahead. I could use a drink first. Now I'll have the real drink. That'll be enough for now. Somebody's prowling around outside. Well, did you learn anything? Plenty. They swallowed the bait. You better stay here and keep an eye on them. I'll phone Bob to meet me at the J Bar and we'll be back as quick as we can make it. All right. The other guy was, didn't you? Looked like Rogers. It was Rogers. We gotta get out of here right now. Nah. This thing will work out yet. All right. I got your phone call, Rogers. I ought to put you under arrest, but I'm ready to hear what you've got to say. All I've got to say is this. Judge Gray is innocent. If you'll string along with me, I'll prove it to you. Okay. Boys, get your horses. You better be right about this, Rogers. If I'm not, you can dust out one of those cells for me. It'll be neat and tidy. I'll see to that. Can we go with you, Roy? No, you boys get back to bed. All right, gang, you go get the horses. I'll wake Miss Terry. All yours, Jack. Take them along. You know what to do? I'll stay with these two guys till I get your signal. Then I'll cut one of them loose and scram. Right. You get the picture, Judge? You're gonna hold up the payroll truck. And I don't think anything you can say is gonna convince anybody it wasn't you. Now get going, Jack. Here they come. Hey, I'm about a mile back up the trail. Okay. We'll get started now, boys. You wait till you see them, then cut and run.
they are. All right. Let's go. Get your hands up. You see, I was right. About what? Over there, Judge Gray. He's running this stick up. Did you want to send somebody after him? Let him go. But he'll get help. By that time, it'll be all over but the shout. And there's going to be plenty of that. I just sighted the truck from Sentinel Rock. It'll reach the bottom in about five minutes. Good. Those guys up in a hurry. We gotta get going. Are you ready, Judge? your hands up. There's Roy and he's got him. Have you got all our guns yet? Yeah, okay. That's them. There's the fellas I picked up. I want you guards to notice that that fellow wearing the black suit is impersonating Judge Gray. We got you, Ranger. You're back. All right, Posse, you can come out now. All right, boys. All right, bud. You can start walking your men into town. Boys, boys. You all did a fine job. I hope Roy brings my suit back. Say no. 
Yes, Bob. Well, we're even again, but not for long. When moonrise comes on, we heard them on the bed ground. All these little doggies that roll on so slow. We round up the herd and we cut out the strays and roll the small doggies that never rolled before. Is it no to me, too? No. Do you mean yes? She said no. But that isn't what she means, is it, Terry? No. Say yes. Yes. No, it's too complicated for me. I can't follow it. You don't have to, Bob. From now on, raise the crowd. Oh. 